If we look at just a few of the major water masses, this is just a few of them uh, in table 9.3. If we just focus on the Atlantic Ocean, we have North Atlantic deep water. Where is it formed? The North Atlantic. Where is it found? Near the bottom. We see that it has a temperature range of 1.8 to 4 degrees centigrade. It has a salinity greater than 34.9, so it's very salty water. It's not the coldest water, but it's formed in huge amounts. It has at least five different sources, so five different water types that feed into it, but these are tremendous amounts. North Atlantic deep water is probably the star of that movie Day After Tomorrow, because it was thought at one time that the, and some people may still subscribe to this hypothesis, that the formation of North Atlantic deep water is what drives the deep circulation. Now there's some controversy about that and, and there's some controversy about how important North Atlantic deep water is, but it is an extremely abundant water mass in the world ocean. In fact, we can find North Atlantic deep water in the Pacific Ocean. So it sinks in the North Atlantic, travels across it, it in deep, the deeper part of the oceans, all the way through into the South Atlantic, uh, into the Indian Ocean, and then finally into the Pacific Ocean. So we know, because of its characteristic temperature and salinity, we know it was formed in the North Atlantic, even though we find it in the Pacific Ocean. Another interesting water mass, and this one of course is produced in much smaller quantities, is something called Mediterranean outflow water. At the Straits of Gibraltar, water comes over the sill and heads out at intermediate depths from the Mediterranean Sea out into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And it's really a curious thing because when you're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and you lower a CTD, you'll hit water that's fairly warm, 11 to 13 degrees centigrade, extremely salty, 36.6 to 36.5 parts per thousand or uh, practical salinity units. And it's a very fairly narrow range depth. You just hit it and it's always there. And it kind of spreads out at very narrow range of depths across the Atlantic Ocean. So a fascinating sort of specialized source of water. In the Pacific Ocean, a couple that we can look at or North Pacific deep water, also sometimes called uh, Pacific common water. You can see here it's much colder, but it's a little bit less salty than the North Atlantic deep water. It's not formed quite as much as North Atlantic deep water, um, and it is a modification of Antarctic circumpolar water um, that forms this North Pacific deep water that travels really along most of the depths of the North Pacific Ocean. So the sort of the most common water that we found, and again, if you go back to those figures, those vertical sections of temperature and salinity, those blue bars that you find across the bottom of the Pacific Ocean are North Pacific deep water. North Pacific intermediate water is a little bit above that, um, produced in great quantities. This water is also an extremely important water mass. And again, these are going to be subtle details, more important for physical oceanography students, but just bringing some sense of awareness that we can go out in the ocean, we can identify different water masses, we can tell essentially where they come from, and eventually we can learn something about how these water masses influence deep ocean circulation and ultimately climate. And here's a few for the Indian Ocean, and I'm not going to belabor the point. In the Antarctic and Arctic Oceans, similar kind of thing. And here I want to really point out Antarctic bottom water. Antarctic bottom water is ostensibly the densest water that we find in the world ocean. Now, there may be regionally, like up in the Barents Sea and maybe parts of the Pacific Ocean, excuse me, uh, Arctic Ocean, we find water that's a little bit denser. But by and large, in the major water masses, Antarctic bottom water is the densest. And it has to do with this. It has an extremely cold temperature. In fact, its temperature is below zero. How does that happen? Well, the fact that salt water is salty, it depresses its freezing point. So normally we think of zero as a freezing point for fresh water, 
it turns out the freezing point for salt water is a little bit lower than that. But it's extremely cold. It's not quite as salty as North Atlantic deep water, but it has it's very dense and it's formed uh, in similar quantities as North Atlantic deep water. This is the water again going back to those vertical sections uh, in the Atlantic Ocean that those blue colors that you find heading up and then stopped by the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that's this Antarctic bottom water. And here's some mode water this is uh, just an, uh, an example of a mode water formed in tremendous quantities um, and other kinds of water masses that we really don't need to pay too much attention to. Again, these are details, but again, pointing out that water masses have different characteristics of temperature, different characteristics of salinity, they're formed in different places, and they're formed in different amounts in the world ocean. And so if you can take away those lessons from this table, then you're a successful oceanography student. Here's a diagram that kinds of puts some of those things in perspective. Again, I would urge you to compare this figure, 921, with those vertical sections that we saw earlier in our, in our last chapter. Here you have Antarctic bottom water, again, traveling from its site of formation in the Weddell Sea, traveling along the bottom, extremely dense water, about a half degree centigrade, 34.8 parts per thousand, and occupying the lower part of the South Atlantic Ocean, although some of this does spill over across the equator, not shown here. North Atlantic deep water formed in the North Atlantic and making up a large part of the deep water that we find in the North Atlantic Ocean. And here you can see this tongue of North Atlantic deep water that extends into the South uh, Atlantic Ocean. And this water will actually also make its way out of the South Atlantic Ocean into the Indian Ocean and also into the Pacific Ocean. So North Atlantic deep water forms up here in the North Atlantic, sinks, travels through the Atlantic Basin and into the Indian and into the North and into the Pacific Ocean as well. And here's some other, here's intermediate waters. This figure also will help you understand the difference between surface waters. Uh, these could be central waters if they were in the central gyres of uh, the ocean basins. And so again, another view of the layering out of the ocean due to temperature and salinity, which influence density, which changes the buoyancy of the water. And so all those early lessons about density and buoyancy and now temperature and salinity and now layering of the ocean, they all come to roost here in a figure like this that helps us understand the circulation of the deep ocean or at least the makeup of different kinds of water masses in the deep ocean and why they occur where they occur.